you. With 226 behind us, we all know that we have a new two division champion in Daniel Cormier. What? Not only is he the lightweight heavyweight champion, light, light heavy nigga, light heavyweight champion of the world, he is now the heavyweight champion of the world. So all of you idiot newcomers out there, Daniel Cormier fought a lot of his earlier career as a heavyweight. Therefore, coming into this fight, I actually, actually, I was on the war DC train. I knew that he was going to knock out Stipe Miocic. However, the only thing that I'm kind of weary about, because if you know me, if you remember the videos I used to put up, uh, there was a handshake at the very beginning of the fight. They got the rules from the ref, then they touched gloves. And in the past few months, Stipe Miocic has been very vocal about not wanting the fight versus Brock Lesnar if he were to win, because he's having a baby coming and he said he was going to be taking time off. And what is the new, uh, what? And what does the UFC need right about now? A savior. Of course, Daniel Cormier is the man to do it. He's a company man and a good poster boy for the company. Not taking anything away from Daniel Cormier, I must ask, was this a work? Take a former paper champion in Brock Lesnar, now paper champion in the WWE, ex-collegiate wrestler. He's a legit wrestler just like Daniel Cormier. Giving him immediate title shot versus another legitimate collegiate wrestler in Daniel Cormier, what do you have? You have somewhat uh. of a good situation for the UFC. Did Stipe take a dive? Don't know. Did Stipe take a dive? Yes, he did. Absolutely no knock on Daniel Cormier. I'm actually a huge fan of the man. And the first thing that I tweeted was DC underscore MMA is the GOAT. Though he lost to John Jones a couple of times, in which one was a no contest due to John Jones' steroid use, Daniel Cormier is still a legitimate heavyweight as well as light heavyweight champion. As I said earlier, he won the Grand Prix tournament as an alternate. Definitely shot, or not shot. <laughs> Definitely congratulations to Daniel Cormier. Definitely congratulations to Daniel Cormier, but that little poos too. Now, <laughs> with all that said, I have two questions for you fuckers. Is Daniel Cormier, AKA Chocolate Dip Fedor, considered as a GOAT, a greatest of all time? Is he a top two, top three, or is he the greatest of all time, though other people have held two titles in two different weight classes before, say in Pride and Dan Henderson, as well as Conor McGregor in the UFC. Is Daniel Cormier the greatest of all time, or do both losses to John Jones kind of null and void that? <coughs> come, but I, I, come UFC 230 when Daniel Cormier takes on Brock Lesnar, will that cement his legacy as greatest of all time? Fuck no. Brock Lesnar got his ass destroyed by Alistair Overeem. In the fight game, a lot of times when you lose to someone that bad and leaving and coming back, a lot of guys like to avenge losses like that. However, Brock Lesnar gets the luxury of an immediate title shot. Uh. <sighs> I'm Beer Drink Shawty. Let me know in the comments. Do you think that Daniel Cormier is indeed the GOAT or should be considered one of the top two to the three of all time? And also, do you believe that that fight was a work? <laughs> I was just about to say something. I'm Beer Drink Shawty with another mixed martial arts vlog. The, be the, best, the best one ever, the best one to ever do it. Back, back at it again. I hope you all enjoyed UFC 226. Answer the fucking questions like I just asked you to do in the comments section below. And also, I'd like to know, was Brock Lesnar out of line at post fight at UFC 226? And also, did any of you catch Joe Rogan the way he looked at Brock Lesnar after smashing his hand against that phantom cam? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. 